Tommy Shoe back at ISO 27001 Ninja, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at ISO 27001 Annex A 816 monitoring. Okay, monitoring goes hand in glove with logging. So, the previous tutorial, 815, be sure that you watch that one first, and then we're going to come into monitoring. I'm going to show you what it is, give you the tools, the techniques, I'm going to show you how to be successful when it comes to your ISO 27001 certification. So we're gonna run that for, through for you today. We're gonna to start off with the definition. The definition of monitoring. Network systems and applications should be monitored for anomalous behavior and appropriate action taken to evaluate potential information security incidents. So here we're looking at potential information security incidents, monitoring our environment, looking for those anomalies. When we looked at logging, we looked at monitoring uh, events so we looked at defining what those security events were. Here we're looking at the process more about monitoring and about understanding what's going on and then how we react to that. How would I go about that? So when it comes to an implementation guide, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my topic specific policy. I'm going to have that ISO 27001 logging and monitoring policy template that we covered in 8.15. Uh, you can download it at the high table uh, ISO 27001 template store. It is part of the ISO 27001 toolkit, or you can write it yourself and look at the video tutorial on how to do that. But you're going to need that topic specific policy and logging and monitoring. We've got the policy, then we're going to identify our requirements. What are the requirements that we've got for monitoring so that we can understand what it is that we need to implement? It's going to be based on risk, it's going to be based on business need, and we're going to consider catching things before or as they happen to support investigations if they do happen and to prevent things from happening. So we're looking at monitoring our environment here. When it comes to the monitoring, we're gonna be monitoring records, we're gonna be creating those logs that we protected in the previous tutorial, and we're gonna be looking at understanding what our data retention schedule is for those logs. So we put the protection in here in monitoring, we need to understand how far we need to go back. Again, we're gonna be looking at what the law allows us to do, and we're gonna be storing our logs for a set period of time that you define that is appropriate to you. We're gonna define what it is that we need to monitor. Yes, we've got our security alerts that are generating, but what are the things that we want to be monitoring on top of that? This is more process driven. So we're gonna be looking at things like traffic, inbound and outbound traffic is something we might want to monitor, access to resources, critical configuration files, security tool logs, event logs, use of resources. So we're gonna be putting in our event logging, now we're gonna be putting in our monitoring. We're looking at things like anomalies to behavior. So here we're trying to catch things that are against the norm. Now clearly we have to set what our norm is, but we're gonna define that, we're gonna set what our rules are, and then we're gonna be looking for anomalies. What do I mean by that? So processes or applications that just stop or restart, that looks like an anomaly. Clearly malware traffic, uh, malware incidents, unusual system behavior, things speeding up, things slowing down, things not acting as they should be, bottlenecks or spikes in resource, resource usage, unauthorized scans or systems, uh, system scans or network scans, uh, access attempts on restricted resources. So there are things that we know that are outside the norm and these are the things that we want to be monitoring. We're going to give some consideration to using monitoring tools. Again, many of the modern technologies have that built in, but the use of monitoring tools would be recommended. Speak with your IT team, speak with your IT professionals, understand the infrastructure and technology that you've got, understand the system events that you can create, that you can log, and then the monitoring tools that you can put in place that will help you to monitor, monitor that. It may be that you have a hybrid of tools, right? So again, depending on the volume of data that you've got, the complexity, your business need and risk, it may be that you need a specific tool or a hybrid of tools, but monitoring is usually done by specialist software with examples being host intrusion detection systems, so HIDS, network intrusion detection systems, NIDS. So there are specific technologies that you may need help of your IT team on. When I'm looking at the implementation, I want to make sure that the staff are trained and experienced. So if I call back to my um, tutorials on competence, we want to make sure that people are competent to perform the role that they've got. So they understand the data that they're collecting, they understand the things that they are monitoring, and they understand the results that they are being provided with. 
The standard does look at things like continuous monitoring. So our monitoring, um, our logging and our monitoring, you know, ideally is going to be in real time. Um, if it has to be at periodic intervals, then okay, but be sure that you can document your understanding why. But we're putting in continuous monitoring where possible. We're generating the logs, protecting the logs. Then we're monitoring for anomalies and we're analyzing that, we're acting on that and we're evidencing that we acted on the monitoring that we did. Be that um, move into risk management uh, where a risk was identified or be that continual improvement where continual improvement is identified, we can show an evidence that this isn't a standalone tick box exercise. So monitoring and logging go, as I say, they go hand in glove, right? Um, put it in place. The same uh, things the auditor is gonna look for, they're gonna look for your documentation. They're gonna make sure that the uh, monitoring process has been defined. They're gonna make sure that you can evidence it. They're gonna log into systems with, or they're gonna get you to log into systems uh, and witness that these activities are occurring. They're gonna see how you have tied in logging and monitoring into that risk and continual improvement process. They're gonna be looking at how you are generating reports and what those reports say and who you share with them and what you do off of the back of them. They're gonna be therefore making sure that you've implemented that properly. When it comes to the mistakes, they're the same mistakes that people make, right? They're collecting too much evidence, they're trying to monitor too much activity, and they're not meeting the requirements of the law. So be sure you're engaging with your data protection professional, your legal professional, be sure that you've identified and analyzed exactly what your requirements are, that you're using the tools appropriately with competent staff, that you're generating the right alerts, that you're generating the right reports, and that you're responding to them as appropriate and that you can evidence that you have done so. This is all about protecting your environment and catching things ideally before they happen or as they're happen happening so that you can react to them. And it's about having those logs and security events in place and those logging the logging in place so that you can historically analyze and build up a sequence of events that led to the situation that you were in and that you can use that information if you need to in a legal investigation and showing that their logs were protected and that you had full chain of custody. Logging and monitoring isn't particularly hard. It's been part of the IT uh, infrastructure and part of your IT infrastructure for a long time. So work closely with your IT teams and you're gonna be absolutely golden. My name is Stuart Barker, the ISO 27001 Ninja and author of the Ultimate ISO 27001 Toolkit. And until the next tutorial, peace out. Thank <laughs> you.